Hey, this is the Fight Nerd, and joining me now is crew of Phil and Nurse. Phil, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing great. Are you? I'm good, thanks for asking. I always love it when they actually ask me how I'm doing. It's such a rare opportunity. Ooh, well, now you're doing too. It's not all about us. Oh, that's what you say, but that's not my opinion. It's about you guys. And you just recently have, uh, we had actually two fighters recently who just came through with some big wins. Frank Yeager, GSP, his, hopefully his win's coming up on the way. But let's talk about Frank Yeager's last fight against BJ Penn, in fact, his last two fights, because you've been helping him uh, with both his fights with BJ Penn. So talk about training with him, and how did you get him to this level of striking? They, they, they've got some great natural ability that they have of their own. And it's just about me, you know, making that come up to another level. And they definitely are very, they're like sponges, both of those guys. They're very receptive to whatever I'm showing them, and that's what you're starting to see. Now, you've also been working, of course, with George St. Pierre. He's got a fight coming up against mm -hmm. Josh Koscheck very soon. What have you been working on with GSB specifically for this fight? You can tell us. No, I can't. Please? No. Little? All I can tell you is it's going to be very unpredictable. Very unpredictable. doesn't really tell us much at all, but I guess that's the style. That's what I answered you the first. <laughs> all right, he got it that time. I can't argue with that. I'm sorry. It's going to be a great fight. You know, Kostek does bring a lot to the table. He's he's the number one wrestler, you know. Um, he's, he's got decent hands, but George obviously is better with all those areas, and we're going to do what we're going to do. Now, George had an original background in striking martial arts. Frankie, not so much. He came from a wrestling background. So how do you take a guy with that pedigree and bring him into striking? Who, Frankie? Yes. Like I said, he's got natural abilities. At the end of the day, he's a t is what I see with Frankie, he's an athlete. And an athlete can usually adapt to a lot of things, not just like what they worked on a lot. And Frankie is he's getting better with his kicking, his knees, everything. Everything's starting to evolve for Frankie. And you're also working with Rashad Evans. How has it been working with him and uh, working with the team Greg, Greg Jackson guys as well, just as a whole? It's, it's just great working with all those guys. It's just like friends. It's like family, you know. Me and Greg get along great. You know, if he thinks my style works for any of the fighters, he gives me a call or they call me and they'll say, can you work with me? And we start working together. They're all individuals, so I work with them all in a different style for that specific fighter. But it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy working with these guys. I mentioned uh, GSP and Frankie are both sponges as far as picking up things. Who's been, I guess, the best sponge, if you will, as far as picking up what you've been teaching? Uh, that's hard to give an answer to the best sponge, but I suppose George has been there the longest, you know, and he's, he keeps improving and improving and improving. Um, John Jones is on the scene now, you know, he's starting to show some colors too. It's hard to say who's the best sponge, but they're, they're all athletes and they're all doing really well, and I'm proud of them all as fighters and their performances, what they're doing. Just fun hearing you say sponge. I'm sorry. I enjoy that too much. A lot of people say it. Maybe I should have used a better word. It's my fault. I, I prompted you with the word. But Right now, you also have a new school that just opened up here in downtown Manhattan. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about the new school. What's different about it? It's bigger. That was the main thing. I, need, I needed to go bigger, you know, and the other school was getting a little bit swamped. So I needed to go bigger. Um, it's in the downtown area where there's not a lot of things going on down there. It's a little quiet, but it's a, it's a busy neighborhood. Um, and it's just better location, it's better light, it's just everything. It's the right move. The timing wasn't great, but now it's all coming together. It definitely was the right move for me to make. Now you work with some of the top fighters all around the world, and you're based out here in New York where the sport of mixed martial arts still isn't legal. So what's it going to take to get MMA legal here? Things like this expo. You know, this expo is if some of the people who have to call those shots and make those decisions were turned up at this expo, they'd see. Um, the, the people here are very nice people. You know, I think sometimes they, they get a wrong perception of like fighting as evil people walking around trying to punk people out all the time and it just gets that rap. And I think maybe it's just out of like, just, just not knowing, you know what I mean? It's just a little bit of, not, not naive, I wouldn't education. say naive, education, maybe that's the word. You know, just to know what they're dealing with. And maybe then they're like, you know what? Let, let's just try it. You know, we had fights here last night, and they went great. It was really, really good. All right, well, Phil, thanks for your time. Appreciate it very much. Thanks a lot.